Hey Toy Fans, Aaron here. Today, finally taking a look at Hasbro's release of Jabba's Sail Barge, the Katana. This was the HasLab initiative that they launched in February of 2018, requiring 5,000 backers, or 5,000 purchases, to get this thing into production. And this finally shipped out of end of February, beginning of March of 2019. So just for a couple housekeeping notes, down in the description, since this review is so long, I did a little breakout so that if you're not interested in what the box looks like, you've seen enough of that, just want to see the vehicle, or maybe you just want to see the interior, whatever, hit that description. There's time cues in there so that you can just bounce around the video wherever you want to watch. So without further ado, let's just get into this thing. Let's take a quick look at the packaging, and this is a massive box. This thing measures in 52 inches wide, 16 inches tall, and 16 and one quarter inches deep. So if you're putting this and the barge on your shelf, you're going to need a lot of space. For the front photo, things are looking great. You got the vintage collection style packaging that you're used to seeing. Great image of the barge. You got a few figures sitting up top there. Off on the left, of course, you got that Star Wars Return of the Jedi logo. Below that, Jabba's Sail Barge, the Katana. And then farther down in that fine print, it does state that you get Jabba the Hutt and Yak Face. Off on the right, you got your little yellow sunny image stating that Yak Face is included. With that Power of the Force coin. Just above that, you got a very nice foil sticker stating that this is designed by HasLab. On the top of the packaging, various photos being shown of different areas of play that you have with this vehicle. I'm not going to show them off one by one. You can see it as it goes by because we're going to take a look at the vehicle. So just going to keep this thing going. On the bottom of the packaging, you got a photo of the sail barge fully assembled with the side panels attached. And then another one with those side panels off. Sides of the box, both of them each the same. Essentially just stating the name of the vehicle here and what's included. And on the back, same as you used to get back in the day. Nice line art photo. Same thing that you had up front full color. Just now it's all black and white. And then top right side is where you're going to see your vintage collection logo. Time to get this thing opened up. And first thing to note, everything is tabbed closed. There's nothing taped. There's no seal to break. Slide up the tabs and that back side will fold down. Revealing not only the side of the sail barge, but giving you a look at your yak face on that Power of the Force coin card. And then on the right side, you got Jabba the Hutt in his little plastic bag. Bottom center in this cardboard box are your various accessories for the barge, such as your sail, all the little pieces to assemble it. The main deck cannon, some side cannons, and various other little bits and pieces. As you slide things out more, taped on top in a little baggie, you got this big stop sign here that contains your instructions for, of course, assembling the vehicle and stating you might need a barge buddy to help you out here. And now here it is, fully assembled, and it just looks fantastic. The team that worked on this, I think, did a wonderful job bringing this thing to life. Now the measurements of this out of the packaging is 49 and a half inches wide. Without the sails on, 12 inches deep. If you've got the sails on, that's gonna make it 15 inches deep. That's edge to edge on the sails. And as far as height, 13 inches tall without the sails. And putting those sails on gets you 17 and three quarters inches. In case you're wondering, you've noticed the four feet at the bottom of the barge. You don't necessarily need a four foot wide shelf to put this on. You just need the space. As far as your shelf, if you're putting this on, from the outer edges of each feet, it's 22 and one quarter inches. The sculpting of the main body looks as it should. I mean, it looks like it popped right off the screen. You got wonderful weathering throughout the entire body. Some nice mixtures of some browns, some rust coloring in there also. And it looks like even some bits of white thrown in there just to add to the weathering. And as far as the design of the body, there's not much to it. And there wasn't in the film either. Just some various lines sculpted throughout the bottom of the body. Obviously, you got your shutter sculpted in there. You do have some little bits here and there throughout the sides of the body. And that's appropriate. If you take a close look at it in the movie, you'll see that you've got little round bits of, you know, let's call it pegs, I guess, sticking out on the side along the top. And even these little longer pieces along the bottom edge. The fins on the back of the vehicle looking great. Some nice sculpting in there. Even some little scrapes and stuff sculpted in there. Now both fins on each side, they are identical. Obviously just reversed. But the painting is different to them. So, you know, they're not looking exactly the same. Sculpting, yes. Painting, though, little bit of variation. You can see it as I'm holding these two up next to each other. You do have a little bit of articulation with the fin. You're able to move it uh, side to side a little bit. Front of the vehicle, not too much to show off here. Your couple antennas sticking off, but otherwise, you know, the look of the body carries through the front. Obviously, windows are closed here. It does make you wonder how the pilots are supposed to see flying this thing. It's kind of, I think it was that way in the movie, even. Other side of the vehicle where the panels do not pop off is looking pretty much the same. The fin, though, on this back side, while yes, you can move it side to side, for me, mine, 
it's got a little wiggle in there. Something's kind of loose. I think I need to look around for a screw or something to see if I can tighten it. Hopefully this one holds up over time for me. Along the back side, you got some nice engine detailing. Once again, uh, not overly done, but definitely some various parts sculpted in there. Little vents on the back side of the engine, as it did look like in the movie. And a couple little silver round knobs there just above the engines. On the bottom side, you got a fair amount of sculpting being done here. It's kind of surprising to see, considering this thing will probably never be off the table. It's not like someone's going to be flying it over their head. So I appreciate their attention to detailing on that. A little bit of rust color painting applied throughout the bottom. Looking along the top of the deck, some good detailing through here. Nice painting, and everything is still looking pretty accurate. Along the front edge, you got some nice golden hoses kind of coming out and then looping back in. On each side of the deck, you got these little two things sticking out. This silver one you can spin around, and then you just got this golden globe that's kind of stuck into place. Various vents throughout the top. Pretty nice rust coloring to it. A little bit of white in there also. Maybe a little smoke effect or something. Two hatches around the middle and these doors do open up. Which leads directly to a set of stairs that takes it down to the lower deck. Continuing on to the back you got another hatch here. These front doors open up and that top grate does slide back. Giving you more room to bring some figures through there. On each side of that hatch you got a nice little uh, ornamental piece. I can't tell what alien this is sculpted in there. I feel like I should know what that is, but I'm sure when someone comments below, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, duh. Continuing on though, you got your main deck cannon that snapped into position. A wonderful texturing to this. Now we did kind of see this piece before it was released as a Power of the Jedi uh, deluxe pack with, with Slave Leia. This is not a straight re-release of that. I, I wish I had mine around, but I have no idea where I put it, so I can't show them next to each other. But as I recall from the images I've seen, the design at the barrel is just a little bit different, so I'm pretty sure this is not a straight re-release. Without the mass on, this does do a full 360 swivel around the deck. Obviously, once you get the mass into position, it does run into the post. And then also you can tilt that gun up and down a little bit. And then continuing on to the back, once again, you got a couple little ornamental things sticking out on the side here, with a ladder taking you up to the very top of the deck and just some more great detailing. Now you do have six positions to stick these two smaller cannons along the railing, three on each side. Detailing for the rail guns are looking really good. Aside from the gray plastic, there's no special wash coloring to this, but you've got a nicely sculpted weapon. And as far as that look goes, it certainly does fit in with the rest of the vehicle. With it attached on the railings, you can swivel it a full 360 and even do some tilting up and down with that gun. Now Hasbro also did work in four C-clip positions for two other figures that came with rail cannon guns. And that would be the 2009 Legacy Collection release of Nitco and also the 2013 3 and 3 quarter inch Black Series release of Viz Am. These can just slide right on in either of those four spots. Also along the railing you've got a little removable piece where R2-D2 and C-3PO went bungee jumping off the side of the deck. It just slides right out, slides right back in. Taking a closer look at the sails, I, I think they're looking great. Obviously the shape looks exactly like it should. And the orange that you're seeing is all cloth. It's very nice. It seems like it might be rather durable. I feel like over time this is going to hold up well. On that center pole you got some nice wood grain texturing in there. Pretty good detailing. Nice little wash to help bring out some of that detail also. The loudspeaker is looking good. Has a nice golden color to it. And even with that, you got some wash applied there. Certainly ages it up a bit. The structure underneath supporting the canopy looks pretty accurate to me. You can get a pretty good look of the canopy from the underneath on a few shots in the movie. Notably, you're going to see this structure uh, when Boba Fett hits the side of the barge after flying through the air. And these things are easily removable. You can put them on the barge, take them off whenever you want. So they're definitely not stuck in place once you put them on. Alright, so let's get this thing open up and really get a good look at it. You've got five removable panels, two for covering, uh, let's call it Jabba's party room, but a larger side piece, and then a little quarter panel off the back end. But on the back side of this piece, I think Hasbro went farther than they needed to. I'm glad that they did, but your pieces that are removable are finished off. Some nice wood texturing in here, complete with an initiative bust that matches with the wall hanging on the other side of the party room. If you were to be inside with it all closed up, it would look like a complete room. Here you've got plenty of shutters that do open up. All of these opened up very easily for me. Next panel to remove is the one covering the kitchen and the armory. And also, as you see on this back side, once again, it's a fully finished piece. On this one, you've got one working shutter. It's two shutters onto one piece. And it does open up farther than you might think. A lot of them, even mine, 
were pretty tough to open more than just, I'd say, a quarter of an inch. On the back side of the jail panel, it's not the wooden finish that you get with the rest of the space, but it does fit in with the area, as you can see. I mean, it's a prison cell. There's no luxurious furnishings here, so it matches well. You do have a little wall post sculpted in there. Otherwise, some nice rust wash done on this, so still looking good and fitting in with the area that this piece belongs to. And for removing the cockpit panel, just give a little slide in from this opening at the bottom, lift up, and it'll pop right out. Back side of this looking pretty good. Still don't know how people are seeing through it, but pretty nice detailing. Looks like you got some filter units sculpted at the top with some pipes running down the middle. Some nice silver and black painting on this. Nice rust coloring also washed in there. And now finally going in for a closer look at each interior compartment. Starting in the back, and the first thing you're going to see is, well, Jabba's Diaz. This piece is separately sculpted, and you can even slide it, well, forward and back as it pertains in relation to the vehicle. As you're seeing it here, of course, that is just side to side, and that's the only direction of movement you get with this. Pretty nice detailing to it. Again, I mean, really everything here in this vehicle has a wash going on. So all the little creases and wrinkles and stuff within this piece are definitely being shown off. And you got some various colors being used in here for the texturing of this little pillow thing that he sits on. The backrest or armrest, however you want to call that, very nice sculpting and nice texturing to it. Once again, nice mixture of colors being used for painting on this. And at the front, you've got his little microphone console. Colors to this, if you want to go by the movie, not that accurate. It wasn't all silver. It doesn't bug me one bit. The microphone is removable. It does slide up and that wire does follow along with it. You might need to give it a little tug initially. The paint seems to have kind of settled and dried together a little bit. Nothing that's going to peel off though, so it seems. At least it didn't on mine when you pull it out. But it's just a tension fit. Do have some button detailing on the top of the console. And looking at the rest of the room, I mean, it is a little smaller than what you see in the movie. You've got four posts, and from what I saw in the movie, there's six posts. So the room is not even scaled down. It's not as large as it, I think, should be. And that does bring me to a point about the vehicle. When it's all closed up, sails on, it does seem that it's very well proportioned. Once you start adding figures to it, though, you do realize it's probably a little smaller than it should be. Aside from that, though, I mean, the detailing in here just looks fantastic. And like I said, as far as I can tell, everything looks like it did in the movie. You got three little room dividers in the back end. Nice detailing with the little claw hands coming around the top of the post. That is something that was done in the movie. I never even noticed that before until I watched that scene on loop for a few times. You have some etchings done that are looking pretty good on the clear pieces of this. Back center, you got a nice bust sculpted in there, mounted on the wall of a Rancor. At the back end of the side wall, another Ishi Tib bust mounted on the wall there. A little bit lower on the wall behind where Jabba sits. You got some pipes exposed there. Again, some nice painting with that. And then even on your screen left wall as you're looking here, you see an art piece that was seen in the movie of Jabba the Hutt and various people around him. Nice detailing to that. Nice little red wash highlighting the texturing of that sculpt. And yet another bust of a Gamorrean guard hanging above that. Along the back wall, you've got nine shutters that you can push open. I think the one thing I really do wish for this area, for all of the shutters really, is that they weren't sealed off. I wish the slots were actually opened up. But that's a pretty minor gripe. Very minor. Floor of this area is a mix of wood and what would look like metal. Obviously it's plastic, but wood detailing looks great. Even the detailing of the floor on the back end, a little bit of what looks like it'd be a rust coloring. On each side of the back end of these little panel pieces facing upward, you got some pretty good detailing here for various panels, some vents, some knobs and pipes. Don't forget to look up too. They even finished off part of the ceiling, not the whole thing, which I believe is still, again, accurate to what we saw in the movie or what I saw anyways. And even though you're never going to see it, recessed in that ceiling are some mechanical parts sculpted in there from the piece that's sitting up on the top of the deck. Back on the wall with the Jabba artwork, and on each side you got a doorway opening leading you into the armory and also the kitchen. Nice wood grain texturing for the stairs. Same thing continues with your brown railing, those little hands extending out over the post. First ladder takes you to the top hatch where the panels open from the front, and then you got two other ladders taking you to the smaller hatches. Back end of the wall, as you can see, you got various weapons hanging and some horn mounts sticking on the wall, probably for them to hang other weapons on. Below that, you see a run of four pipes running from end to end. Great black painting, and uh, it's hard to tell, maybe some golden colors. I can't tell if that's gold or silver based on the reflection of my light. 
Nice countertop sculpted in there. Some pretty good riveting detailing done around the front edge. You've got another weapons rack sticking out from the front side of the stairs with two ornamental decorations of someone's head. Same pieces that you saw in the top of the vehicle also. This weapons rack is good for sliding in your staffs and vibro axes and stuff. Two little indents on the floor do help to keep those into place. Coming towards the front of the opening, you've got a smuggler's hatch. This does lift right up and reveal just a small compartment underneath you can stick stuff in. And then carrying on down, you get to the kitchen. It's a fun little area that they added in. And this section here, again, I mean, as with the rest of the vehicle, it does look great. Wonderful wood detailing done for your painting on the front of the cabinets. Silver continues on the countertop. Some nice slots for the grill. You got some beautifully painted fish hanging on the side. I forget what they're actually called, but I feel like we saw those in episode one. And then here you've got another doorway leading you to the prisoner area. And this looks exactly like you'd expect a prison or a dungeon to look like. It's got nice gritty detailing. Lots of rust splattered around in this area or washed in. You've got more rust detailing on the floor than you do on the rest of the vehicle. So it really fits the theme in this section. The jail cell door does open up. Not the door itself, but this entire panel piece does slide out. Now this does open wider than you might think. As you pull out a couple inches, you're going to meet some resistance on the floor. Just keep working it. Pull with your right hand on that tab and give a push with your left hand and you'll work your way over that piece. You're going to feel like you're going to break it, but as long as you stay patient with it, you'll get it over that hump. Do this a handful of times and it does start to get easier. Aside from that, inside the jail cell, that does reveal the skeleton of a hammerhead. Some clothes still hanging on this guy. This piece is just amazing looking. Lots of great detailing to it. They did a great job with the paint application of the various clothes, the coloring of the skeleton structure and stuff. But to note, it is not removable. Early on, I believe they mentioned he would be. But in this case, it is glued into place. So if you pull it out, you're going to end up breaking it. As for the rest of this, you got two chains on the one wall that you do attach. It comes in that accessory box. The chain itself is a nice thin metal with plastic collars on each end. And I like the length of chain that they gave you. It's nice and long, so you're not trying to attach your figure to it while it's still in the jail. As far as the jail cell wall that's on the back side of the kitchen, detailing still continuing throughout here. And there is one more prisoner latch, if you will, that is already sculpted onto the wall. You don't need to, thankfully, you don't need to try and mount that in there yourself. And also there's no chain attached to that one. And there is a fun little play feature in this jail cell. On the exterior of the barge just above this section, you got a little button here. When you push that button, he falls right in there. That's always a fun little feature to have. And carrying on to the very front, to the cockpit, you've got a doorway that leads you into this part. The detailing in the cockpit here is just, I, I think it's outstanding. you got two driver positions, plenty of leg room to stick your figures in here. Some nice detailing for the instrument panel. All the stickers are already placed for you, so that's nothing that you need to worry about. I like the images that are printed on the stickers. On the outer side of the cockpit, some heavy rust coloring done also. And then just various vent pieces and panel pieces and mechanical parts sculpted in here. Once again, on the back wall of the cockpit, had a couple of ornamental heads sculpted in there. Some more panel detailing also on that wall. Moving on now to your additional figures that are included as part of this set. First up, just a brief mention for your carded yak face. The figure itself is a straight reissue of the vintage collection Salt Mare. So yak face, both the same figure. What you're getting in addition here, aside from the coin on the card, is the little drinking glass. Looking at that card though, I mean, this is that Power of the Force coin card that we got back in the 80s. And it just looks beautiful. It's, I haven't seen this card in a very long time. So it's certainly a nice addition with the barge. As you see, you got that silver coin there sticking out just above the figure. Nice image of Yak Face. This is the same image that you got in the Vintage Collection release. And then down at the bottom below that Kenner name, you see this time they've named him Yak Face, as he was called back in the 80s. Vintage Collection release gets you Salt Mare on the card. Now to note on my card, top right side, you're going to see a little half circle sticking on there. Unfortunately, that's how it came in the packaging. Some people, or many people it seems, have it either on the right side or left side on the top of the card. I have no idea what happened with that. Looking on the back side, Star Wars Power of the Force logo in the upper left corner. For the numbering, they went with VC zeros, triple zeros here. So this guy's being put in front of all the other vintage collection releases. The rest of that card, or I'd say about two thirds, is a nice write up about Yak Face with a nice photo of him and Riyiz off to the side. Just below that, you got the notation about the special Star Wars coin being included. Also an image showing you the front and back side of the coin. 
And then at the very bottom, just a very small amount of legal information. And I gotta say, it took me looking at this card to realize it, but both on the packaging for the sail barge and this card, it's just single language being written out. Now, I'm not going to go into a full review of the figure. I've already reviewed the Vintage Collection release. I'm leaving this guy on the card. I have a link, though, down below in the description. So if you do want to see a review of the figure, you can go ahead and check that out. And moving on to Job of the Hunt. He just came sealed in a little plastic baggie, so there's nothing really to show off for that. This is a straight repaint of the 2013 Black Series release that they did as a Toys R Us exclusive. That's the one that came with a Rancor and various other figures. That one I don't have an opener of, so I can't do a side-by-side -side comparison for you. But I will say that as far as the paint application, this is a much improved upon paint job. Now I have heard two different things. That Hasbro did and or was going to use the new face painting technology for Jabba. And I've also heard that they ended up not doing that. So I can't definitively say one way or the other, but I will say the application in his face is looking really, really good. I'm still trying to decide how I feel about the way that they painted the eyes, though. I mean, it, it's they're painted on nicely and right into position. I just don't know how I feel about the pupils. It, I mean, it's not done like Jabba's eyes, but I gotta say, it works. It fits in well for the figure. Nice blending of various greens and tan coloring in the face. As you're taking a look at the painting for the backside, that's where it becomes more evident that this is two separate pieces. They did a good job of blending the green colors and matching it up on the sides of the head. But on the back, he does have a darker green going on. And it kind of just cuts off right where that head attaches. But who's looking at his backside anyways? As for the hands, uh, I mean, they're stubby like they should be. On his right hand, you can see they've got painted in there his hut tattoo. As far as the rest of his little worm body, like I said, everything's looking really appropriate. Nice detailing in there and some nice dark wash also to highlight the texturing of that sculpt. You got the scar at the edge of his tail. As far as the articulation, you're able to spin his head all the way around. A little tight, but it gets there. He's ball jointed at his shoulders, so they do spin around. And then hinge, so they come almost straight out. At that right arm, though, you get just a little bit less range of motion there. As you see, it just doesn't come down quite as far as his left arm. Elbows are hinged also, and they swivel. Both of his wrists swivel around. And you get a good range for side to side. His right wrist for me, though, is just not budging. I can't swivel it or work the hinge. Maybe over time that paint will loosen up. And as you would expect, Jabba slides right in perfectly on his Diaz. And no problem getting him to hold that microphone. And now all that's left to do is fill this thing up with figures and enjoy the view. And as I mentioned earlier, I mean, you know, opening this vehicle up, seeing the inside of it, it starts to come to life. But getting figures in there just makes this thing pop even more. You have an amazing amount of space to load this thing up with figures. And in my mind, you know, use what works in each area. We've had 40 years of figures being released. Luckily, we've had some oddball figures in there, such as Dex and uh, I forget this other alien's name from episode one. But, you know, they, they work great in the kitchen. It's plausible. Why not? And certainly over the years, we've also had a lot of skiff guard figures released. So you've got a pretty good variety to pull from to stick on the top of the deck. Now, I did mention earlier that I felt the proportions were a little bit off. And as you see here with all the figures on the top of the deck, it does start to feel like the sails are a little too low. But like I said earlier, proportionately with no figures on it, I think it's fine. If this, if this thing was just a little bit bigger, which, you know, it's hard to say that on a toy that's already four feet long. But I think it was, if it was a little bit bigger, that would raise the sails up more, keep it in proportion, and you'd get a better fit or a feel of the figures fitting better with the canopies on. So overall for me, I really love this barge. I think Hasbro did do a wonderful job with it, and I'm thrilled that I was able to get this added into my collection. Uh, I'm glad that they moved forward with producing this. Now, not everything was rosy for uh, many people on this. I mean, even myself, you know, I got the corner crease on the top of the Yak Face card. A lot of people received their barges damaged in the product box, and you know, mine did too. What you saw in the video was my worst of the two, which luckily isn't all that bad so i feel like i can't complain as much as other people really have the right to but that said hopefully in the future when they do these you know, larger pro projects they put a little more care into packaging it to get these things shipped across the country and to still arrive in the mint condition that most people were expecting it to so that wraps up this review i'd really love to know what your thoughts are on this vehicle in the comment section below and as always i do thank you for watching